Where is Vez from? A I don't know. Oh, Verity means truth. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, my parents just, I don't know, pulled it from somewhere. Cool. Yeah, and roll with it. It's, it's like, it's good because it's different, but no one can pronounce it. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, like if you, like if you order a smoothie somewhere and you're like, yeah, Verity, they never, they're like, what? Really? So I can't usually make a name up. Bez. Yeah. Or like, well, it is unusual. Yeah. Where, no what's the, it. what's the origin? Like, where's it from? Do you know? Um. Where does it mean truth? I think Latin, it's. Hmm. Latin or like Italian maybe, I think, or something. Okay. Like it's, yeah. It is beautiful. It's different. In yoga, uh, the word for truth is satya. I like that as well. Satya. 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 Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Satya. Well, yeah. Vez, thank you for coming out here. Pleasure. Great to be with you. This is beautiful. Yeah. Love this. Big shout out to Cam, my bro, for <laughs> hooking this up and connecting Love us. Of, I'm such a big fan of netball. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I must that. admit, I've never played Never. I grew up obsessed with basketball. Yeah. Never. And never played netball. It's but true. I have so much respect for you guys and, and the game. And it's intense, huh? Massively. It's like, fun. <laughs> I think it's almost, I don't know, women in general, it's like this white line fever, we call it. So I think women are naturally um, caring, soft, beautiful, you know, away from the court. But as soon as we get onto the court in netball, that just deletes you know we're like a different type of animal out there yes it's crazy um but you know i love it i think that's what's so beautiful about it is that we love each other off the court once we're on there your game time you rip in like you see what the game is like it's rough it's tough it's almost like you're one of the boys but in our Mm -hmm. own sport which is really nice so i couldn't help but notice even in the grand final there was Mm -hmm. still there's still a touch of femininity like giggles and there still was a touch which i really loved because it was so the heat was on and it was intense but there was still just a little bit of joy yeah. and playfulness and giggling and Definitely. really cool. And that's what's cool, I think, with netball is it's our sport. It's a, We can really claim it as a women's sport. Mm-hmm. You know, men obviously play it and love it. But I think we're almost probably better at the boys at it as well. It's suited to us. So mm-hmm. it's really nice that we have our own little thing mm-hmm. to kind of call ours. Cool. And you do see that the scrunchies still come out in the hair yeah. and the pigtails and things. It's beautiful. But yeah. yeah I, I, I loved getting into it last season and you must be really hungry for this season, huh? Oh my gosh. Um, that to, grand final was epic. Oh, to go um, down by three when we were up by seven or eight at half time is killer. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, as weird as this sounds, I'm almost glad we did lose because now the appreciation and the want to go out there and go and win this year is like no other. Mm. I've, I'm loving going to training. I get up every morning, cannot wait to get there and put as much as I can out to training and soon preseason games in a couple of days. So, you know, you do want to win a grand final, but we just weren't ready. We just weren't ready mm-hmm. for it. And unfortunately, sometimes I think you have to lose a little bit mm-hmm. to actually appreciate it and be ready to, to take something on. So it's yeah. exciting. And yeah. how's the body feeling? Good. I feel great. Um, as you said before with Cam, we've got an amazing physio on hand. So he's put us all in good stead. Yeah, um, Cam. At a boy. <laughs> but I feel really good. You know, this is, I think this is um, the best I've ever felt probably in my life. Mm. Um, mentally, physically, I feel fresh. I just, I'm raring to go, to be mm. honest. How do you deal with the pressure of being an elite athlete, the... Mm. The expectations that must get put on you, their contracts and just losing the grand final and then probably, most likely, inevitably, with um, the upcoming season, there would be like this kind of expectation and pressure. Yeah. How, do you, how do you find you deal with it? Is, is it just fun and just a part of your drive or is it a conscious effort to work with the stress of it? Yeah, I think, look, when I was younger, I didn't deal with it that great. You know, mm. I've played um, for a few ne- few years now in professional league and I really struggled with it. I felt every ounce of that pressure, you know, having to perform, wanting to make the Aussie team or almost put so much pressure on myself knowing that, okay, I've got to play this season amazingly to get contracted next year. It built up and built up and you just break down. Your body can't handle that. Mm. 
um, I think I've just learned to let go. And to be honest, like mindfulness is such a big thing. You know, like you've got to be able to be in a happy state and enjoy what you're doing and, and love what you're doing. And that's all I'm trying to do now is um, I turn up every day and give it all I can. And I walk away knowing that every session I've put in 110%. Mm. And that's literally all you can do. I, I kind of live by the rule now, control the controllables. So whatever is in you know my favor, I'm going to put out there. Um, and whatever I can't, you know, it's out of my hands. Um, mm. So I always take that pressure off. And I think that's why I'm just loving being there. I love going to training. I love getting up. I love traveling. I know that we've got games coming up. It's just, I love what I do. So I, I delete the pressure and just absorb being in that moment and love whatever, you know, what mm-hmm. I'm in. I think if that makes sense. It totally does. <laughs> and it sounds beautiful and balanced and, um, yeah, that mindfulness seems really crucial. I was speaking exactly. with Michael Klim last week. We did a podcast and we were speaking of the common predicament that happens with athletes when, you know, they're at an elite level like you are. They've been identified with that role and the pressures and the highs and the lows and the expectations. And it's kind of a, a roller coaster of adrenaline and excitement and then the downfalls and and that heavy identification with that role. And then whether it's injury or retirement or the end of that chapter, inevitably it's going to come one day and the common situation of, of the athlete just falling apart, either like putting on heaps of weight and getting depressed or, or, um, the drug issues, like we've seen with Ben Cousins and many other players, the gambling issues, the sex addictions, like a lot of addictions yeah. tend to come into play when that mindfulness is absent, when they're they're unable to like connect to who they truly are beyond their role or their position or the contract. So that mindfulness seems really crucial for not only working with the stress while you're in the career, in the role, but then like also when, when retirement does happen or injury happens to to navigate that, you know, a hundred percent. And, you know, my husband's just going through this re- the retirement stage. You know, he's hung the boots up with footy. Um, he's played at that top level for Wallabies. He's played, you know, all around the world. And I've kind of watched him go through that. And to be honest, he's had such a smooth transaction because he's had so many other things going on outside his life. He's starting his own risk management business at the moment. So he's hungry and, and wanting that. So it's been amazing to see that. But I've seen the other side of it as well where all you know is sport. And I'm kind of in that situation that I've just grown up playing sport. I haven't really studied a lot outside or ventured out things. I've been so channeled and to see just this environment, this is all I want. And that's what you grow up and that's who you are. So retirement for me is a, it's a daunting, it's a daunting, um, a thought, I think mm-hmm. like to say what is next. And I guess trying to get things in place for when that day actually does happen. But mm-hmm. you do get so caught up in this world. It's you're in this own little bubble. So the athletes that do hang their boots up, it's so easy to be addicted to something else and to jump in because you're looking for something you need that we're, we've been, we're almost addicted to the sport we play every day. That's all we know and do. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a difficult time. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, you're so you're channeled in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does feel like, yeah, again, some kind of mindfulness practice or yoga practice is, is quite a healthy thing to do because it's all about connecting to who we are beyond our role. And I mean, it's not just athletes that have that issue. I mean, apparently like the biggest, uh, age group and gender like is, is of having depression and suicide and whatnot is like men in their fifties who have either lost their job or have early retirement and they don't know that that sense of self and there's that identity crisis and it's a real issue. And then a lot of mothers that identify with being a mother heavily and then all of a sudden their kids aren't at home and don't need them as much and <laughs> that identity crisis, the, yeah. the quarter-life crisis, the midlife crisis. The, like, it's a I, tough world out yeah, there. It's tough. And I think in our culture where we do identify so much with that role, whatever role it is when that, when that role changes or whatever, it's so confusing. You know, we, 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 we get brought up and it gets kind of, it gets hammered in. This is who you are. Yeah. This is your worth. You're either appreciated or not. Or, and yeah. then, um, 
yeah, often the polarity of that, the downfall is like, who the fuck am I when, oh, when, when the time comes? So yeah, that would be daunting, you know, that yeah, would be daunting it's... if it's not a part of the program you're in or the team, the kind of conscious conversation of like, well, what's next? But I guess it's not their Definitely. job, you know, it's up to the, the individual to seek that out. Uh, yeah. Exactly. That's the hard part. Like yeah. <laughs> no one else can help you do it. You've yeah. got to figure it yourself. So I think too, like being in that role, I mean, you know, not netballs, we aren't superstars, but just to a lot yeah, of little kids you are, you Big know what time. I mean? And yeah, you're huge almost role put on models. a pedestal a little yeah. bit. So when that comes off, you know, or f- especially, you know, with my husband being a rugby player, those boys have played, pay great money mm-hmm. and they are superstars in our world. When that stops and all of a sudden you're, you're normal and you're not getting that money and things, your value to yourself almost drops. You know, you do ask who you are and what you're doing. And we've got a lot of pressures in our world. I yeah. mean, social media and things now, it's, you know, everyone wants to be something and do something and be someone. And mm-hmm. it's a difficult time. It right? is. It's, yeah. The social media navigation, that's a whole thing. Because it's seen, we know it's not real. Yet no. this kind of avatar formation that, you know, we know everyone is just putting on the best picture of that yeah. day or that week. And Definitely. we know how much goes into it. And <laughs> we've seen yeah, the selfies. It's, <laughs> it's so seductive and it just, it, it sucks people in, especially these younger kids. And that conversation seems to come up with every podcast, no matter what context, the yeah. social media thing. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, being a big role model to these younger kids, it would be very interesting. Um, yeah, navigating that as a little kid these days. Joe and I often marvel at like our daughters, like what world they're coming into, you know. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's, scary, yeah. you know. Like it's what is it going to be like when they're our age mm-hmm. and they've still got social media running around or what are their expectations? Yeah. That's what worries me is, you know, when they see, you know, you Kylie Jenners, you Kardashians, mm-hmm. if, is that who they're trying to be? Is that, is that who they think that that's the right, that's the right passage? You know, mm-hmm. it's it's... It's tough for you. You've got two little, two little ones too. <laughs> yeah, and they're gorgeous. And yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting time. And uh, it, it's so exciting and beautiful. Yet that progression of technology, it's so unknown. Like yeah. where it's moving into virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Like it's just going to get more and more, you could say, ingrained. So it, yeah. it's another instance in which it feels really... Um, critical of having these mindfulness practices and these practices to kind of go beyond the outer world, you could say, our role or our social media image or to get in touch with who am I really beyond that image, you know? Exactly. And that's what, that's what's so beautiful about yoga and about this mindfulness practice is that you actually can channel that. And Mm -hmm. I, I think you actually see things a bit more Maybe mean, you're a bit more enlightened, aren't you, in what actually opens your eyes and what actually is real in this world. Mm-hmm. That's the beautiful part of it. Yeah. And for like people competing such as yourself, that's a crucial part of finding the flow, like that, that flow zone where you're giving it everything, giving it everything, yet you're also uh, seeing the bigger picture. And often the yeah. metaphor is that of like a really good chess player like they're not showing it all like they're 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 kind of playing it cool like they're giving it all yet if they lose the balance and they they start sweating and losing the cool and they're not in the flow like i'm gonna see that (laughs) they give it away (laughs) and it's so similar in in sport and kind of everything like if we grip too tight even like a shitty driver like if they're like Take it like anxious and taking it too serious and gripping the wheel. They're a crappy driver. You're going to lose control. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yet if you're just like, you know, looking at your phone and looking out the window, you know, you're a shit driver as well. So that fine balance of like, yeah, having autonomy and kind of directionality and control yet kicking back and just letting it flow. I mean, we see it in everything. In I love tennis that. seems to be like tennis, like you can see it flip real quick when one is like starting to grip the tennis racket too tight or like that you can see it very quick i find that that's one of the more evident ones and surfing is another one so fine do you find that in netball like the definitely the little flips of like the mind state can mean such a difference huh? 100 percent. we um 
I guess it's like that, you know, you put your game face on and you kind of get into that mind where, all right, I'm about to step out in the court here, everything's focused. But there is just that fine line that you want that A game, you know, you want that perfect game we're all chasing. But in reality, perfect game doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a mistake or, you know, there's going to be a missed shot or, or something. It's just that balance about knowing how to figure out where to go when that happens or, you know, how do we react or... um the, the flow, I guess, is right, is how to be into that nice, smooth balance where that pass is just crisp enough or with us, it's about seconds. You know, you've mm-hmm. got three seconds to put that ball here or place that'll catch this. You've just got to be in that nice little balance kind of zone, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, before we get out there. Um, it's crucial. It's absolutely crucial. And the older I'm getting, the more I'm seeing that. The more relaxed I am and more zen, I guess, we can talk about before a game, the better I play because mm. I'm just enjoying it and I'm out there. Once again, it's the pressures. We need to take the pressure off us in, in game and in life. You know, we've just got to relax a little bit and take a breath and, and realize that we will still wake up the next day. Mm. <laughs> pressure needs to be eliminated yeah. in life. <laughs> yeah. And... um physically you guys put so much pressure on the body like the the stopping and the starting like it's a very unique yeah. angle to put the knees under and the the, an- yeah. the ankles under um it seems to require even that that refined fluidity even with how you move because if you're too rigid yeah. in how you move that could mean the difference between like a successful landing and like blowing out a knee huh yeah it's definitely <sighs> so we have soft feet kind of yeah. thing in that boy. You've got to land softly. Right. And, and, you know, I should know I've got terrible knees. I've had a knee reconstruction and have come back from that. But it is like we're in all sorts of angles. And I don't know who invented this and why I even play it when I think about it. But you're running as fast as you can. As soon as that ball in your hand, you have got to stop or it's stepping in someone else's ball. So to move as quick as you can and dart as quite as fast as you can, then catch and stop and have to release a ball all in this time frame, it's ridiculous. Mm. And our bodies are under a lot of toll. Our poor knees do take all that on. Um, but it is. We're all about soft and controlled and have a strong core so you can pull yourself up. And, uh, and the gym has just been a game changer. You know, we've seen, as I guess technology grows, so does science behind sport and what we can do in the gym to move our bodies and to strengthen us is that's what pulls us into netball. That's what keeps us strong and keeps us going. Otherwise... If you're not strong, you don't keep up and you get left behind, mm-hmm. unfortunately. What's your preseason training like? What's a typical day um, right now? Yeah, so it hasn't been too bad, to be honest, this year. So um, we have court work in the morning, um, which goes for two, two and a half hours. Have that middle kind of day off and we're back in there for maybe gym, fitness or prehab kind of things so that can go maybe anywhere for an hour to two mm-hmm. hours so it's it's quite nice you know like we haven't been too bad they've been blending fitness in with our court work and with gym this year so it's kind of not coming in for those third session kind of thing a day mm-hmm. um but it's been great like I, I can't get enough of it i'm just mm-hmm. loving it um and you guys hit the weights pretty hard don't you yeah i keep saying you guys yeah <laughs> yes gals yeah, yeah. <laughs> um we're competitive you know like yeah. and that's what's it's fun. Like everyone's in there wanting to outlift and, um, and we know that we put the hard work in now and continue this. That's what we need to do to win that grand final. And I think once again, as much as I hate to lose that last last season, that is fueling our fire and everyone just wants to lift a bit more, run a bit faster, jump a bit higher. We've got this real hunger going through us. Mm. Um, it's a great environment to be a part of. As I said, I'm just loving it. I awesome. love training. That's so cool. I can tell you're <laughs> radiant, you're glowing. Yeah, you're it's just it's amazing, you know, mm-hmm. and any extras I can get outside, I just, um, I'm, I'm embracing, you mm-hmm. know, handstands with Cam has been amazing lately, just something totally left field, but the strength you mm-hmm. get from it and even that, even trying to focus in something completely different has, has just been a new ball game for mm-hmm. me. I, I love to dabble in that. Um, I box outside as well. So it's always nice to get a good sweat up and take a bit of anger out on the pads. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's healthy yeah. you know, as much as you can kind of mix it up. And definitely. you're doing quite a bit of barefoot running on the beach. Yeah. That's so good. I mean, oh, it's beautiful. Cause being in shoes constantly, your stabilizers get lazy, your feet yeah. get lazy, and then the knees do become more vulnerable. So, yeah. uh, that barefoot training on the sand. So my good. favorite, it's yeah. absolute favorite to be out in the sun to next to the ocean, be on that nice sand and mm-hmm. that soft stuff, really grinding through it. 
it's my favorite. Yeah. I think it's my favorite kind of workout, I think, to be on the beach. And, and yeah, no shoes. It's beautiful mm. because we are. We're locked in and taped up every day. It's great to see women getting into the weight. So I still know quite a few women that are locked into the notion that if I do weights, I'm going to get <laughs> bulky and, and too thick. And I, I know yeah. a lot of women that, um, well... Not a lot. It seems to be shifting, but a few that are still locked into uh, yeah. that old mode of not wanting, yeah, not wanting to bulk up. And it yeah, is definitely. very inspiring to see women getting physically strong, and it seems empowering as well. It is, you know, it's so good for you. Like I, I love to be strong, mm-hmm. and leaving the weights room, you just feel like you've really done a hard, good session, mm-hmm. you know, and you can see your body changing and. To be honest, like, yeah, you will put a bit of muscle on, but I don't think as women we're, we're not thick, you know, like like men, we're not ever going to get that big. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just, I think it can be so good for us. I mean, our bones love it. We need it. And as the older we get, the stronger we are, the longer we're going to last and to be able to keep moving and doing things. So it's not only that I do weights, you know, for my sport, but I want to do it long term so I'm healthy and mm-hmm. strong, can keep doing all these activities for as long as I can. Um I'm kind of doing PT at the moment, so just finishing off my last studies with this. And I do see those women as well that, you know, they are so worried about it. And once again, that comes back to, I think, that social media of that perfect body, that slim, feminine, you know, but I think that's changing. I think strong is sexy. And, you know, I think that that's the message that needs to be out for women. It's there is no perfect body and whatever you like or want to be, that's enough. You know, that's enough. that's beautiful in mm-hmm. itself. But to me, that athletic strongness is, I think, go for it. Mm-hmm. You um, brought up the Kardashian thing before. <laughs> and then just now, um, it seems potentially a little blessing of the whole Kardashian phenomenon is uh, women, uh, the appreciation of a big butt, like not being so scared. Because <laughs> before that, it seemed this unhealthy obsession to get like this, yes. like just unnatural, uh, stick thin yeah. up and down, no curves, no shape. Uh, women were kind of locked into that heroin chic kind of just skinny, unhealthy look yet. Yeah, maybe a blessing of this whole Kardashian thing is like yeah. women, um, have a booty. being okay with having a booty, you <laughs> yeah. know, and, and it's, it's become nice. beautiful. So it's quite interesting how like we trends will, we'll shift. Thank, huh? yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kardashian. <Kardashians. Yeah. laughs> but it's so. funny how like anything can become either uh, like a healthy balance or like, cause then we've got a lot of people just, uh, fixated on getting like the biggest roundest butt <laughs> now and like, like just obsessed about it and getting you know, like butt implants so it's, yes. it's so funny how like something can be empowering and balanced and beautiful or it can be taken in excess and just like yes, totally to extreme yeah oh, extreme so, the like, girls in the gym that all they work on is booty like you know <laughs> Look, I, I, I take my hat off to them because it's hard to do that. It's hard to build. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. We do. We take things to extreme. And mm-hmm. I think that is, once again, is that perfectness of, that we chase on social mm-hmm. media kind of thing. But, um, the, you know, it's a big thing to embrace your body and to love it. And I think, you know, people will slowly get there. I think it is turning that little bit, mm-hmm. you know, um, especially, I mean, I mean, men have it just as hard though, yeah. you know, like look at all the images on social media of men with the, with the perfect rig or the big boys yeah. or, you know, not big enough or too skinny. Or- yeah. I was in the bodybuilding scene a little uh, while ago before the yoga world emerged in my life. And, um, a lot of bodybuilders were admitting really, uh, uh admitting that they felt the equivalent to like an anorexic, like, mm. They, they, when they looked in them, even though they were huge and jacked and looked amazing, they would look in the mirror and see a skinny, pale uh, man. And, and so they would go back to the gym and get bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and more and more tanned. And, but every time they'd go back to the mirror, skinny, pale, and it was an unhealthy obsession. Yeah, Again, it can be definitely. a beautiful lifestyle or it can just go to extreme and yeah yeah men men have it as well for sure it is those pressures isn't it like mm-hmm. it's as we said before it is a tough world and we do live in that but the more you can embrace that body and love who you are i think yeah. it's you know that's all we need to do we need mm-hmm. to lift people up not not tear people down totally speaking to um kids 
and the younger uh, women in particular in admiration of your elite awesomeness in the sport, uh, speaking to them in particular right now, and maybe they've got an aspiration to be a pro netballer and they've got the whole social media thing and the aspiration. Like, can you speak directly to them on that note of like, of balance and, and how to give it all yet to keep, keep the balance? Yeah. Yeah. I think, look, I think the social media side of things can be great if you are aspiring to be something, you know, like you want to be that professional netball, then great. And to be honest, the girls put out so many tips or or videos or, you know, or what they're doing in training and things, and, and that can be so helpful. I think when I, if I was that age looking at that, I would love to see what the girls are doing, what they're up to, what they're eating. You know, like that's – we've got some great chips out there and some great girls are doing that well on social media. Mm-hmm. So that definitely is a balance as well is pick who you want to follow and see and – and, um, and, and realize what they're putting out there. Um, but I think, look, it is just a balance in life. We've got to, I would say to the young girls coming through that keep studying, keep doing something outside of netball, because I think it can be dangerous to put all your focus into one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, put as many eggs in baskets as you can. But I think if you want something bad enough, then you'll do it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm from a country town and I, you know, was nowhere near the city. And I was this country kid that kept, would drive 10 hours down for a training session and 10 hours back. Um, so wow. mom and I, yeah, we put a lot of effort into this and I just told myself, you know, if, if I want something, I'm going to give this a real crack. And, um, it was a mindfulness thing, you know, like you've got to believe in yourself and put that effort in. Um, the extras is, was massive for me. You know, getting out and whether it was a ball against the wall or, you know, running more sprints to be fitter and faster and stronger is what I did. Um, so, but once we go back to it, you know, like I'm all, almost counteracting myself, there still has to be that fine line in balance. We can't mm-hmm. put one, we can't put do it all. We can't have it all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a difficult message, isn't it? To, turn, it is. to say to a little one, you know, <laughs> try as hard yeah. as you can and do everything you want, but... Uh-huh. Keep a balance in things. Well, you're, would you say you're in the peak of your career right now? I think so. I yeah. hope so. You know, I, I feel good. Uh-huh. So I, I think there is wisdom and insight there to share. I mean, can you, can you look back and see where it wasn't so balanced or maybe you were like Absolutely. too fixated? <laughs> like it, it takes revisiting, doesn't it? To, to keep cultivating that balance. So. 100%. I was, I was that girl that was so fixated on, you know, playing for Australia. That's all I wanted to do. So, you know, my first couple of years, I, I think I was so individual and not focused on my own teammates that thinking, let's win as a team first and let everything else take care of itself, you know? But I was that one that was focusing on my game and what I can do to improve me, 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 you mm-hmm. know, whether it's once you kind of pull that back and I look at what I can do now for myself, but not only what can I do for my teammates to make us better, to win, to, to go to that next step or, you know, I, I'm just little things like that. I, I was tunnel vision, you know, looking, looking down netball, netball, it's all I wanted. But now I kind of take the, the pressure off and, and go back and think, why did I start this game in the first place? Because I loved it. I love being with my mates. I love running around chasing a ball for whatever reason it is. I really enjoy this. So the more fun, the more love you can put back into it is where you're going to get your best results. And I think that's where I'm sitting at the moment in life is I'm loving going to training. I'm loving playing. I'd love this game. And that passion really flows. You know, I think that's, that, I mean, that, that's advice to little ones in yeah, itself is totally. to go and love it and enjoy mm-hmm. it. We have to have fun in life. It's mm-hmm. too short to to be cranky at the game or to, you know, be frustrated at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Take the pressure off control the controllables and just enjoy life. (laughs) Totally. That might be the title of this podcast, Control the Controllables. I I like like it. I haven't haven't actually heard it put like that. I like that. Excellent. (laughs) Um, You are also known for your massive heart (laughs) on the court but also off the court. I've heard uh, at, what was it, the last training session the last time you were in the in the arena last year, you you gave all the cleaners flowers, <laughs> and you know, no one else oh. gave them any notice or anything like that. That's beautiful, you know. Oh, I, you know, we had we've got some really lovely cleaners mm. that that come in every day and clean up after us. Um, we're very lucky and blessed to be in that environment. And 
who, you know, like I'm no better than anyone else and, and they're no better than, you know, we're all one and we're all equal and I think we need to value that more. You know, like they are beautiful and almost get unnoticed because mm-hmm. they're cleaners of that title. So, you know, I, I just I love seeing their smiling faces every day. They come to work so happy and looking after us. The least I can do is, you know, give them a little something to say thank you. Um, as I said before, we've got to lift people up, not tear them mm-hmm. down and just enjoy what we have, don't we? Yeah, yeah that was so beautiful. That actually gave me chills as you were speaking of that because it, it is so thick in our culture to... Um, to not even notice people in 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 certain roles, the, the, the cleaners, the the checkout people, and I I yeah. also love those moments, you know, when when checking out, when everyone's just kind of rushing and not really connecting, like just 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 a smile, even you know, yes. just a smile, or if you do have that opportunity to give them flowers or whatever, just that acknowledgement yeah. seems to be it. It definitely, and the, mm-hmm. and we do, like, I think we get so fixated on what titles everyone has or who's who in this big world. Mm-hmm. We're all people, you know, like we're just, we're all human beings mm-hmm. on the same level. And I think if we start looking at people like that in this world, I think we'll be such a more beautiful mm-hmm. place, you know, to just be the same level as everyone. Uh, yeah, that is one thing I do love about g- heading over to the east, you know, India and Bali. And um, in particular, I speak of this one man who's the security guard at the ashram that I go to. And yeah. he literally is the most radiant person I've ever met, like more <laughs> more than the, not to put a hierarchy of radiance, but yeah. <laughs> um, it just, every time it stands out uh what a beautiful, radiant man this is. And it totally breaks the our common perception of what a security guard is and what they're Definitely. meant to be like. But the friendliest, biggest smile, clear, radiant eyes and just so lovely. And every time I see him, it reminds me of that and it, it, it breaks my... Um, kind of conditioning a little bit more and yeah it it has helped transform my perception of uh and and to appreciate people in whatever role or no role you know um because you're bang on um it it's it's so prevalent in our culture to 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 have that hierarchy and to yeah, to not show appreciation. So I really okay. love that story of you giving no. the flowers to the to the cleaners. That's really Hello. sweet and beautiful. They're good eggs. They're good eggs. Speaking of eggs, for breakfast you had an egg. <laughs> yes. How is your? How, explain your diet right now. Where, yeah. Where's that at? Um, I'm kind of dabbling into this keto kind of diet at mm-hmm. the moment. Um, I'm a type one diabetic, so you know anything's kind of worth worth a shot. Um. And I kind of almost just like trying, you know, those little those little phases that come in that we see all these little diets go in and out. And I actually just like to see what actually works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. But this seems to be really working for me at the moment. Um, so carbs, if I have carbohydrates, I have to take a needle to kind of match that because mm-hmm. my pancreas doesn't work. For those that doesn't really know diabetics. Um, so the keto is really nice. You know, I've, I've lowered my insulin intake, which is lovely. Um, so... You know, weight is something that you can put on quite easily with insulin as it stores as fat. So that's quite nice too, to be able to manage my weight a little bit more. Um, But just, I feel really, I feel bubbly. I feel alive. I feel Mm -hmm. really energetic from this. I think carbs almost put me to sleep sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all been that food coma where it's just knocked you for six. Christmas day when you eat too much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I think that was, you know, around being an athlete it's almost like people think oh yeah you need carbohydrate you need energy you need so much to keep going but we actually don't mm-hmm. um so the high fat kind of you know high protein diet has been has been awesome um yeah eggs for breakfast every morning I'm absolutely loving that and that's something so easy to mm-hmm. do you know like I want something that's quick and easy that I can get up make this and and get on gone with my day um and my sugars have been loving it great to know? hear and your yeah. energy is better and I feel amazing. Wow. You know, the biggest thing I think is, look, I've always had a sweet tooth and being diabetic and sugar just doesn't mix, but mm-hmm. I still used to have a bit. But getting rid of those sugars, I just feel so clear. The mm-hmm. clarity I think I see and feel in my mind is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, sugar really is, it's an addictive little little drug, isn't it? You it know, is. like it's So once you do eliminate that, I just... I feel amazing. Great. I feel in a really good place. Yeah. Cam and I often marvel at our, um, when we were kids, we would have the, the 12 wheat bix with like 
at least a tablespoon or two of white white sugar Ooh, yeah. on each to. wee bit. Yes, you had to, right? So it was like 12 to 30 tablespoons of sugar <laughs> on top of sugar. Nice. <laughs> and we'd do that on our Cocoa Pops. And yeah, Same and, here. and I do recall like the first chapter of my life, like my energy was just crap, you know, yeah. um, I, I I thought I had ADD. I did. I really did. And it was the sugar thing, like the constant yo-yoing and constantly yeah. being hungry and not, not really being able to fill the gap. And until I got more informed on nutrition, yeah. until then it was just sugar, 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 which is what a lot of people are doing. Definitely. So I do appreciate this current trend of the keto. I do think some people are taking that in extreme yeah. without being informed on it too much. Yeah. Like I've heard ridiculous shit, like just, um, you know, so the, so the intermittent fasting, which is another fad yeah. and then trying to squeeze in all of that fat and protein in the two meals. So just like huge, huge meals of like, you know, two steaks and cheese and this and that and the other. Just going backwards again, yeah. isn't that like <laughs> defeating the purpose? Yeah, and talk about food coma. I mean, yeah. uh, so there are quite a few people that I've met doing that and they've gotten quite sick. So they've yeah. done it for like a couple weeks and just done it all wrong and then have like just bottomed out and spewed everywhere or oh. fainted. One person I know just Huge. collapsed, fainted. And um, I think that kind of thing is pretty common. So yeah. it seems like some good, healthy conversations around like doing it healthily so it can be beneficial and you can actually be energetic, not just Absolutely. not just uh, – pretty much like a form of eating disorder you know like uh, it is yeah. and, you know it's funny like we've got all this information out there i think you've definitely got to do your research mm -hmm. when it comes to these kind of things but you know i reckon we put things in the way that we want to like right. you know keto it's like oh yeah i can eat as much meat as i want you know yeah. like it's just like we always make things almost too easy for mm -hmm. ourselves that we want to like it just to make it fit yeah but it's to it's not like that at all you know mm -hmm. like it, it's it's totally not like that at all um You've still got to watch that protein intake. Otherwise, yeah, weight is going to come on or, mm -hmm. or your mate's passing out. Like that's huge. You know, like that's it's not where you want to take it. But I think if we hit targets and we do, you know, hit our macros, right, you feel unbelievable. Mm -hmm. As I said, like I, I'm i loving this. Yeah. <laughs> but I do recommend definitely do your research and talk to people before you do jump on this because, um, yeah, it can definitely spin you in a mm -hmm. bad cycle. Yeah, so the athletes out there that are kind of locked into <laughs> – you need heaps of carbs. So mm. training so much and just burning as much energy as you do. Uh, can you describe a, a keto day for you of what that looks like? Yeah, yeah. definitely. So um, depending on how long training is going to be or, you know, what intensity we're going to take it to. So usually if we've got a two and a half hour session in the morning, I'm like, okay, I need a little bit of food in here in the morning. Um, I'll have two eggs, maybe some bacon with it or something like some kind of protein getting in there, a bit of meat. Um, and that, that's pretty much me for the next two and a half hours. Um, if I don't have training in the morning, I love a little intimate fast. Um, if I can fast till 12, perfect for me. If we've just got gym kind of thing, usually I can get away with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so the eggs and bacon, um, take me into about 11 o'clock maybe once we finish training, then I'll come home and have an early lunch. At the moment, I'm just obsessing with mushrooms. So loving like a big stuffed mushroom, you know, full of bit of mince, bit of cheese in there, a um, bit of guac on top, you know, get that. Nice. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, let's get my, my yeah. stomach rumbling. Yeah, Keep yeah, going. it was good. <laughs> um, and then for dinner, I've been having a lot of fish at the moment, just loving seafood. So fish, um, you know, white white fish or prawns. Um, my husband cooks some amazing chili mussels the other night. They were stunning. Mussels um, are great for you. Oh. They're... they're I keep raving about it since my podcast with Heath Daly. Um, he was just raving about bivalves and uh, how good mussels are for you and, and oysters and clams and whatnot. And, and they taste amazing. I've been like, having a lot lately and it's so good. It's like a little superfood, isn't yeah, it? You it know, really like, is. And it, like something that tastes that good, I thought like this can't be great. Yeah, but, it oh, actually is. Yeah, it, it, it satisfies the the vegan technicalities as well, apparently. <laughs> and there's debate on that. Interesting. It, there's debate, yeah. Okay. But so vegans eat mussels? 
depending on what side of the debate you're on. Mm. So uh, Heath's argument is that they don't have a central nervous system. Okay. They don't have a brain and they don't have a heart. So they're as... It's, it's kind of the equivalent, really, yeah. of not eating a plant because it's conscious. Yeah. So, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I so that. um, that, that's, that's the kind of languaging he is using for it. I doesn't like have a central that. nervous system, doesn't have a brain, doesn't have a heart. It technically is an animal, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't have those things. So how how conscious is it? And I mean, it's a slippery mm. argument, and and people like to take their stance and hold on to what they believe. Um, yeah, but I'm fine. Not that I'm vegan. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in the conversation. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, and I'm interested because what he was seeing was there were a lot of gaps yeah. in the vegan diet when done long term. Mm. Uh, he's also seeing a lot of the gaps in the, when the keto diet is done long term if certain things are um, avoided, like a lot of people are avoiding the, the greens and so forth. Yeah. And long term that can really accumulate. But the, the bivalves fill uh, the muscles and the clams and so forth, fills a lot of those gaps, which Perfect. I'm excited about because I love them too. Same. I yeah. could live off them. Yeah. Like I think if, you know, what those questions where someone says, okay, you're stuck on an island, you can have one food. Like, I think they'd be up there. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> well, apparently it fulfills a lot of your uh, nutritional requirements. So it's, and love them. The, the, the high dose the high amount of good fats in it the dha um yeah. really good for skin protection as well so perfect. out in the sun it'll uh so it's perfect pr- island, protect your skin from the food. inside out <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. your whole day of eating after yeah that's kind yeah. of you know like and i might throw a few snacks in there if mm-hmm. i have to a few nuts and things but look i think because it's higher in fat and in protein mm-hmm. you're full like i'm i'm not looking for food and Trust me, I was the biggest, you know, I, I feel like I used to have such an appetite, always looking for something, always looking for more. But this has just really curbed the craving, cool. which has been great. Um, sugar-free jelly has been awesome. That's been a nice mm-hmm. sort of like something because I always want something for dessert, okay. always, you know, just a little something. Yeah. And that's been amazing. Or just some little homemade protein balls. Mm-hmm. Um, and they seem to kind of stick the sweet tooth, mm-hmm. put it in a spot. But in saying that, I still have a cheat day, you know, like I think you've still got a well, cheat meal, sorry, mm-hmm. over the weekend. I think you still have to do that. You know, you've got to, I bring carbs into that meal and you just have to. Yeah. That, for longevity. Definitely. Yeah. And it was almost like, you know, it tastes amazing, but after it, I still, I almost think, man, I really appreciate the keto kind of diet mm-hmm. because I feel crap again. <laughs> and it's almost like, yep, refresh, let's go. Like I've that's had that. That's cool. That's yeah, a good way to put it. Definitely. So yeah. um, I think that's key. Otherwise I just don't, to be, honest, I, I couldn't keep going. You know, I couldn't keep it keep it straight if I don't have a little treat here and there. And yeah, have you tried that ice cream? Um, oh, I forget what it's called. Cam introduced me to that as well. Lots of shout outs to Cam. He's just kicking goals. He's killing them. Uh, <laughs> the um, what is it? The oh, was it Halo Top? No. What's another? Like it, it uh, satisfies the paleo requirements. Dan, it's got a. Um, it's like a Spanish word, not Dianata. It's uh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Yes, is it? I, I think it's is, is this Dian- Dian- Yeah, I think that could yeah. be it. Yeah, I think it is. The chocolate one. Yeah, is I haven't incredible. had it. Yeah, He's, and he has been talking. I'm like, surely these like nutritional stats couldn't be right because like it's got tastes that good. No, it tastes that good, <laughs> but the the um, the almond milk they use and the 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 cream or whatever. Um, yeah, it, it makes it super creamy. That's Ooh, like my favorite right now. I need now. to get around that. Danada. That's the one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like you have to have a little sweet here and there, yeah. right? Like, And it's really yeah. cool. The company's coming out with really um, healthy healthy options. You know, it doesn't have to yeah. be the old mass-produced crap, you know, the Cadbury yeah. and the Nestle and whatnot. It can actually be pretty good and still taste great, you know. Definitely. You know, like I, I feel fortunate being a diabetic in this mm-hmm. in this world because at the moment they're bringing out such amazing products that – you can eat and levels don't have to suffer. And it's, yeah, I'm very lucky, I mm. think, to be in that, to have ice cream like that that is guilt free and sugar free. Dream. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. how good is living? <laughs> when were you diagnosed with diabetes? I was 17. Okay. So I was a little bit later. Mm. Um, most people are kind of born with it or, you know, young kids kind of is when you're diagnosed. But I think fitness held it for a little bit. Um, and then one day I was playing and 
it just kind of the court got quite dizzy. I got a hit and next thing my dis- my shoulder was dislocated. I was just really out of it. Mm-hmm. Put it back in. I was really disorientated and um, ended up, you know, after I went home after the tournament, my nan was like, just go get checked out. Um, and next thing I know, yeah, I was told I had this disease and mm. I knew nothing about it. You know, like the first thing I thought was, okay, cool, like I can eat heaps of jelly beans, but it's nothing like that no. <laughs> at all. You know, like it's, it's almost complete opposite is to avoid sugar and, and, and yeah, take needles the rest of your life. Mm. But like, as I said, like the world we're in now and um, I guess the science and the backing behind all these diets to help us is – you know, I look back on the people that, you know, years and years ago that really struggle with diabetes. It's, it's, we're in a different format now um, and it is controllable, which is, yeah, it's amazing. Exercise and a good diet and I can live a really healthy life and a long, happy life. Cool. And on a day that you don't have sugars, do you not need to inject? Is that right? Or Yeah. So I'll have, um, we've got long acting and short acting insulin. So mm-hmm. I'll always have a long acting insulin, but my short acting is for like, you know, those carbs or those sugar I hardly touch it, which Mm is awesome. You know, I was going from about six needles a day down to maybe one or two. Mm. Um, So it's it's a game changer. And once again, with the weight, I'm finding it a lot easier to manage my weight um, and put muscle mass on. It's just been, you know, it's amazing what eating can do for the body. It's it's actually insane. And the more you investigate, the more you see and actually have fear and you feel it. Mm. Um, It's exciting. You know, it's exciting to see where you can take it. Yeah, I'd love to hear... um further down the track how how that's all going like long term yeah. with the keto and high performance sport and Definitely. just for kind of kind of data and feedback for other other people interested in it but locked into the belief you need heaps of carbs and yeah and all 100%. of that so i'm really interested to see how it goes definitely huh? i think i'm just scratching the surface with this as mm. well so yeah i really want to keep looking into this and, and keep testing these little theories so i definitely will next time we have a podcast we'll, we'll see where we're at yeah hopefully i'll be in shredded shape and yeah, be happy <laughs> for sure and still just vibing high just killing it yes yeah. so i hope so yeah i'm in a good state at the moment so Great. i'm happy with where at. Good. Yeah. And the PT thing. So can mm. you tell me more about that and where, where that's all going? Yeah, I'm just, um, I've got three months left on my course. So we'll finish that and be, yeah, certified personal trainer, which would be good. Um, right. You know, once again, all I've known is netball. So I didn't really know what to study or what to do. And I'm just kind of going through and seeing what I might like and just jumping in. So I thought, yep, personal training, you know, it's the kind of, I love to work out and energy and to if I can help people in that area, I think, I, you know, that to me, that's quite satisfying. Um, so I'm hoping to take it down that kind of angle. And once this is kind of all cleared, hopefully get a few clients happening and, and get the ball moving a little bit. But I'm not so much really want to get stuck into the gym. I more want to be outside um, the beach. I think, you know, the sand is probably our best friend when it comes to working out, being barefoot, um, you know, bringing yoga into things as well. That would be beautiful. Um but I just want to get people moving again and get people loving it. I want people to get on this level and this energy. You know, I think exercise is crucial. And with the jobs that people have now, sitting in an office all day, it makes me so upset to think they're not out enjoying and, and loving working out and really are getting a vibe off it. Um, so I want to kind of bring that back into people's lives. And, and you know, having those having those beautiful chats as you're working out a rain together, you know, they're the, they're the most beautiful times. And, mm-hmm. I love that and I want other people to, to enjoy that too. Great. That's mm. exciting. I want to hear the progression of that as well. Definitely. Because uh, as you know, that's a big part of my life as well. It all kind of began with PT and then just naturally evolved from there. And yeah, it's so beautiful. You know, um, it, it's such interesting times, the, the, the desk jobs in, in combination with just our vibes are getting uh, confused with it, with all the the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and the, just the the rapid pace of our society. Uh, yeah, people need to move and need yes. to get their feet on the earth and jump in the cold water. It, it's yeah. just so important, and it feels as as technology keeps going the way it's going, it, the the importance of it is just getting more and more magnified. To yeah. Yeah, go for a run on the beach and then jump in that water. I mean, it's so simple. Yes, there's but, little things. But it, it it helps to have people, especially if they don't have that support network or the inspiration to have people to go to, like, like such as yourself, to um, to motivate, you know, because yeah. it can be tough. It can be tough if one is working 
hours and hours at a desk and surrounded by artificial light and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and maybe uh, negativity. Like, uh, I can't imagine that. And then, oh, I'm, I'm meant to work out yeah. now. Like, it, yeah. it would be really hard. Definitely. So. And bring kids into the mix, you know, like, if you have to get home and look after your family, yeah. like... It's a full on, it's, it's a tough world, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and times, trying to find time to do that, that stuff now is, it's almost impossible for some people. Mm-hmm. So just want to kind of bring people back a little bit and have those switch off moments and just feel again, you yeah. know, like we have to live. And, and I think just being outside, you know, as much as I love working out in a gym, being outside in the elements, I think is, um, it's refreshing and it just, you appreciate it a little bit more, I think, and oh, especially yeah. being locked up all day. Oh yeah. Especially being locked up in day. The yeah. last thing you need is to be in a, another locked up environment. Yep. And, uh, just the, I, I had to get out of the gym environment. That, that was one of the things that was gradually getting me out of that scene Yeah, is I could, I could see the imbalances that were just normal. Like, yeah. uh, so that people were considered healthy, yet and fit then i would see them have a nervous breakdown you know yeah. or healthy and fit and then you hear they've just had a, a heart attack or their blood pressure skyrocketing and, and i i could keep seeing that the gym environment isn't actually that healthy yeah. seeing more healthy gym environments popping up with the kind of um wild movement and natural movement Love and all of that emerging, like people getting barefoot and um, just moving in more natural ways and a bit more mindful music, not just kind of blasting the senses because uh, the people are just fried after that, after a day of being like <laughs> on the computer, artificial light, and then in a gym, artificial light, blasting music, like people's nervous systems are just getting you go home smashed. Exhausted, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then people can't sleep. Because yeah. their ner- their adrenals are just fucked, they're fried, and yeah. their nervous system is tight. People then can't sleep, and they're having crazy nightmares because everything's still revving. But that it's different- actually it's stressing me out <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> it's like, whew, yeah, it's tough. Like- so like that was considered healthy, and I kept seeing like, holy shit, this isn't healthy at all. Yeah, and that difference to getting out outside, getting the feet on the earth. Like you can still go hard, yes. But then, like, chill out after, go for a swim, uh, have a stretch, like meditate, yeah. And then uh, it just makes a world of a difference, huh? It just makes sense, you yeah. know. Like just hearing that, even like going from this extreme to here, mm-hmm. like it's just uh, we all need more, <laughs> more of that. I think, yeah. you know. And the more I see it, the more my eyes open, mm-hmm. and and you see that side of things, yeah. Um, it's an exciting time. It is. <laughs> it is. I mean, we need more and more of these conversations because that stressed out uh, fight or flight state has been kind of normalized. Yeah. Like it's considered normal. Absolutely. And yeah. then pop a pill to uh, counteract that or to sleep or to feel relaxed. You know, people want that kind of... Pew, yeah. instant because yeah. it, it can be tricky to shift gears from that fight or flight which you would see a lot of as well in the competing realm definitely fight or flight and then it can be a, a both addictive and then uh yeah it's been normalized yeah. that is considered kind of normal in our culture it is, it's a scary thought you know and, and you know going back to that i i think we go through that a bit with netball. We have late games, you know, like, and when we've, when we've got a game mode, you've got a crowd pumping and roaring at you. You're, you're in this, your adrenaline's rushing, you know, like you've just won a game by one. Everyone's on this big high. And then all of a sudden you've got to wind down and go to sleep because you're on a plane in the morning to go home and right. to get to training. That's, you know, the girl, we don't sleep very well after that. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's a time where it's like, you know, I find a bit of music and, get something nice and soft and almost kind of get into that Zen mode where mm. you've really got to practice to get into that. And I, you know, it's, I really, I'm quick to forget that people, that's everyone's, that's everyday life for some people, mm. you know, being in, being, as he said before, that the office, the crazy gym, then trying to sleep and we get impatient. So we take something to knock us out mm. or, you know, like it's, it isn't healthy, is it? To try to keep up with that rat race. No. And it can be so simple to counteract those stresses of life, but it does take a bit of discipline. Again, like add into the equation, a kid or several kids, it can seem like there's not enough time. 
So yeah. it, it, it just takes a little bit of uh, discipline and mapping out the day a little bit and then momentum. It just becomes like brushing your teeth, you know, those little, little habits. I like to think of like the setting up the mind and the body before sleep kind of like, yeah, the equivalent of brushing the teeth. So you brush your teeth, you know, you do all your other kind of hygiene things. And then there's like psychological hygiene, you know, like what am I doing to clear out the day that I just had, whether it was good or bad, just to recalibrate and shift, whether it's a meditation practice or a bath or a cold plunge or a walk on the beach or whatever. Like it can be whatever, but just that conscious attention Okay, had the day, gave it everything. Maybe I didn't give it everything. Okay, tomorrow's a fresh day. I'm going to prepare my mind, get it quiet, get it nourished, and then go to sleep. I feel that it's so important. Oh, my, our, our team sports side could be so proud of you. To that. <laughs> Does she talk a bit about that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess like an hour of power is what we speak mm-hmm. about. So trying to take an hour out of the day um, to actually, you know, think about what we've done that day, what we've accomplished, what we haven't or what we need to do. And then to, you know, have that to yourself. I think like we have to be a little bit more selfish, I think, in our lives to take that time and go, ah, you know, like let's unwind and Mm -hmm. let's get ready for sleep. Let's, let's prep. Let's, you know, because we do get caught up in this little rat race of a world and we, everything streams by us so quickly. We're already on to the next day. You know, it's 5am up you go where, here we go. So yeah, an hour of power, I think. Mm-hmm. Take that time and, and, and see everything and go through what we have um, and unwind. Yeah. It's important. And the phone, the phone thing seems important. And I don't always follow through with this advice, but having the phone in the bedroom is so toxic. Yeah. It's, it's one of brutal. the worst. Absolutely. And I still do it, even though I know it's shit. Yeah. Every like every now and Same. then I'll still do it. Same. And <laughs> always it's not as good a sleep as when I turn my phone off and leave it out of the fucking room. You know? Yes, I know it's so easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so seductive to like just check in, but yeah. to do it right before sleep is not good. And no. I do it. I totally admit I do it. But do you it's get the not updates good. now on your phone with how long you've been like I your do. screen time? I've appreciated that. Yeah. It's been good because it's been gradually it's going down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which we, uh, I've had this conversation quite a bit. Like it's interesting that uh, Apple decided to put that on because mm. their whole thing is to seduce people into being on the phone more. Yeah, absolutely. But that kind of is an awakening of, holy shit, I've been on it like 15% more than last week and then it goes mm. up. Uh, that is waking people up to be on it less. Yeah, respect Apple. Yeah. You know, like, because, yeah, it's almost counteracting their business, right? But, yeah, they're kind of sorting us out a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, it shocked me. I think mine was like three hours or something. Or yeah. I was like, Jeez, I spent that much time on that. Yeah. Like, well, that's actually pretty good about it. I thought I was like, Apparently, oh my God. <laughs> some people are on it like a ridiculous amount. Uh, yeah. Not three hours in a day, three hours in the week. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, th- I think some people are on it like nearly three hours a day. Damn. Damn. Like, you, like some environments are shocking when you look around when you're not on your phone. And you observe like everyone on their phone. Yes. I've seen it so many times at dinners and things. Yeah. Like you just kind of look around where, you know, everyone's taking photos of their food, which look, I'm a sucker for because I yeah, love food. I do it as well. Absolutely. And you yeah. want to share that, you know, yeah. it's a loving thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're sharing. But it can but be shocking sometimes. Yeah. So. You look around and you're like, oh my God, like yeah. we're not talking or, you know, I've had people sitting across from each other, texting each yeah. other. It's like, what? Uh, <laughs> Talk, you know, like we're yeah. losing that communication skill. Um, I've been doing a thing lately where I um, encourage everyone that's at the meal to turn their phone off and put it in the center of the table. That's nice. And uh, that's some nice. people really get angry about that, defensive. Yeah. See, I find that beautiful. It like, is beautiful. Be it's always be- more beautiful. It's great. Yeah. Just getting old school for a moment, yes. getting, getting the phone out of the hand, out of the pocket. Yes. We shouldn't have the phone in our pocket anyway. No. <laughs> Frying our genitals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's great. But yeah. every now and then people get very um, uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable. addicted to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're absolutely addicted to it. You know, like I, I get up every day and walk to training and I've got my phone in my hand while I'm walking and I feel weird if I don't. You know, yeah. what if someone calls me or messages me, but yeah. 
what's the big deal if I, if I miss it? You know, yeah. I'm going to training anyway. I'm not going to see them. It's, oh, yeah, we're all addicted. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is. And I'm intrigued as to where it's going because mm. things like that screen time and things are, are, are arising that are waking people up to it, even us yeah. just talking about it. Like yeah. if we were totally unconscious to it and just sucked into it, we wouldn't be talking about it. It'd exactly. just be normal. Yeah, we see it. We yeah. see it. We but see it is an interesting time for it because it's so addictive. Those dopamine hits every time we look or the... Yeah. The opposite, the kind of cortisol hit, the let the let down, the disappointment. Yeah. So that I think that's the addictive spiral is like, you know, it's either going to be a dopamine hit or like a stressful hit. Yeah, it's you like see that and you're like, oh man, you've got me. Like, it's kind of like constant yes, drama. Yes, exactly. It's like your favorite TV show, like yeah. all rolled in one. Mm-hmm. You don't know what roller coaster hit you're going to get. Yeah. But in saying that, like I do learn a lot. I do as well. Yeah, it's very educational. Yeah. You know, like, and look at all these kids now on laptops. Like, mm-hmm. they don't have a pen and paper anymore. Like, I feel so old school that I was at school with a book and paper. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel old school when I write shit down on, with pencil and paper. But, but it I feels love it good. too. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, lo- I miss, I like writing. Like, yeah. that's nice. It does feel like a good exercise, huh? Definitely. But yeah, I'm, I'm grateful as well for the social media thing, the, yeah. the phone thing. It's just another platform that i think requires that discernment that balance that discipline yeah of life is discerning if you're going too hard on that yeah going too hard on the diet going too hard on the phone like just discerning when to when to pull back when to turn the phone off when to rejig the diet like all these little things that can can seem too much i think for some people to yeah. even think about all that yeah so it just kind of, I think it gradually becomes a part of people's lifestyle of just being, just being aware of what we're doing in the, yeah. in the moment. That's just the being biggest present. thing. Yeah. They're the things that we can control, you know, like those controller controllables, they're in our hands, they're the yeah. things that we can work on, things mm-hmm. that we can manage. How are you finding the social media thing, being in the spotlight, being on the pedestal with the young ones and all of that? How, how are you finding navigating it? Oh, look, I... I'm not huge on it. You know, I'd actually like to get into it a bit more because mm-hmm. I think I can, you know, being in this little position that I am, I think I can put more out to the world and I would like to. Um, I think it's really, I love seeing the exercises and things. Even I learn, you know, things off social media, off new workouts or something new to cook. I love that side mm-hmm. of it. Um, and that's probably what more I want to produce and put out there, especially with the diabetics or the young netballers and things. Um but yeah, like it's, I've had to, there's been times where, you know, I've had to all right, do follow this person because they're really making me feel bad about mm. myself or I'm not skinny enough or, you know, like it's, I've really? had those moments. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I try like to Like verbal, of, verbally putting you down. Is that what you... Um, no, just more image, you know, like right. seeing things going, oh, the like, comparing. Okay. yeah, you yeah. know, like that comparison mm. is like, I'm not, I don't look like that or I don't look like this. And I can see how that can be so overwhelming for people. Um, yeah, so I try to stick to you know the fitness pages that I enjoy, or mm-hmm. I just follow the things that I what I want to see and, and what I'm about, so I don't get so consumed in this little this little life of mm-hmm. ours that we've created. Yeah, um, just just the enjoyable, the happy, nice. Follow the dogs, follow the cats. You know, I love that kind of yeah. side of it. Something fun and playful uh-huh. is is where I kind of take it. Cool, yeah. beautiful. Okay. Well, I'm excited to be a part of this upcoming season. I'm <laughs> yeah, a super fan now. Yes. I have loved being Good. at the games and just witnessing you all shining and rocking it. And I love Cam is just, yeah, it, it's awesome to see him <laughs> a part of the team. And yeah, it's been a real, real delight. Oh, observing. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. And we love having you. Yeah. It's beautiful. No, it's going to be a good season. We're excited. Well, I'm excited so, as well. And I'm really, really inspired. Thank you. Yeah. Stu. Good that. luck. Thank you. And uh, what? how can people get in touch with you? What's your social media handle again? Verity Charles. Okay. Yeah. So and, jump on Instagram. I think yeah. it's the best. Um, slide into the DMs, you know, cool. <laughs> send us a message on there. Um, jump on and follow. And, and yeah, I think Instagram is probably my, my best platform. The one Great. I'm probably will, will reply to you on. <laughs> Great. Well, much love, Bez. Great to connect. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sweet. guys. Yeah.